Oh, hello there! It's me, Ghost Hunter Dave, from Imperious Rex. I thought that you people at home may be interested in the books that we have behind us in every episode. So we're going to take a quick tour of my personal comic book library here at Studio A of Imperious Rex. Come along, won't you? So let's start off right now with uh, what you normally see behind us on any given show. This is kind of the indie shelf. So up top we have a smattering of books that don't really fit into my big three indie categories, which are Dark Horse, IDW, and Image. Image is completely eating up real estate right now. Uh, as you can see by this pile of books that have yet to been shelved, they're essentially all Image. God, I don't know what I'm going to do with those. Oh my god. So, up here we have a lot of really good stuff that span a bunch of different publishers like 20,000 AD, Top Shelf, Pantheon, Dynamite, Icon, all these. Some Miller World up there. Some standouts. Of course, I've talked at length. I love uh, John Lee's Sync title and then And Emily Was Gone. These are from Comics Tribe. There's a Dylan Dog. There's some Lemire. A bunch of Miller stuff. Excuse me. Some Grant Morrison Zenith. These were from the twenty thousand or the two thousand AD line. And just a bunch of stuff that I would love to put on the show sometime because they're not quite as well known as a lot of the stuff we cover. Black Hole is a given, of course. Essex County by Lemire. And this one I've been dying to read. My favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. Then we move on to some weirder stuff. My Clive Barker, Hellraiser, Nightbreed, all that stuff. I'm a big Clive Barker fan. Some Boom, some Lovecraft stuff. Some Archie, surprisingly good. Especially the horror-themed Archie. The Bunker, Sixth Gun by Colin Bunn. And the auteur, which is one of my favorite things that I've read recently, and I would love to talk about this on the show. Then we have an Alan Moore section. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Girls, which we would get flagged on YouTube immediately for. <laughs> His League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Providence from Hell, Tom Strong, Promethea. All those would make great episodes. I know, Troy, you would love Tom Strong. Oh, I can't you wait. Would eat it up. <laughs> Then we have the Dark Horse Mignola section, which is, uh, I mean, it explains itself here. Amazing Screw on Head, always a favorite. Baltimore, Joe Gollum, the Hellboy Libraries, along with his first and last appearance. And then uh, just the swath of Hellboy, BPRD, and the Mignolaverse right there. Very good, Dave. I didn't know you did that first and last appearance issue. Oh, yeah. You didn't see it in every episode we've ever I filmed. never put it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then some more Dark Horse stuff. Empowered, which is a fun, uh, lighthearted book by Dark Horse. It'd be a good one to do sometime. It's a tad sexually explicit. <laughs> it is. We do a nice theme episode out of that. <laughs> and right alongside it, uh, Sin City. And Harrow County, Black Hammer, Lady Killer. As you remember, we... More Gaga over that oh, when we God. reviewed it. Um, some more random Dark Horse hardcovers. A lot of Matt Kent in there. Um, we got some Fabio Moon, Gabriel Ba, some Dark Horse Book of Horror. Lots of fun stuff. And then our library editions here Fear Agent, Goon. And we've got Hard Boiled. Some great Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller. And then we move on to. Some Valiant, uh, just a chunk of Valiant from kind of their relaunch, along with some Aftershock Studios books that I was picking up. Black Eyed Kids, Shipwreck, Alters, Insects, and then also some Black Mask publication, The Dregs, Kim and Kim, We Can Never Go Home, Four Kids Walk Into a Bar, or a Bank. Uh, I've heard these are all great. Haven't read many of them yet, but they're here. <laughs> some Horror Manga. On to IDW, we've got Lock and Key, my, one of my all-time favorites. A lot of Joe Hill stuff. I'll buy anything Joe Hill puts out. Some Ghostbusters, some Turtles, and uh, another one I think you'd be a huge fan of, Troy, 
the Parker series by Darwin Cook, the adaptations Ooh. of the novels. Very good. These would make a good show. And then we're going to end this episode here with a look at the image chunk, which I'm not going to name all these, but as you can see, there's Let a pile. Let me zoom in and get a smattering of all the titles. Yeah, a whole lot of them. Oh, so many favorites, and so many that I haven't read yet, so they're always waiting. We've done Invincible, obviously. Wouldn't mind doing Kill or Be Killed sometime, as that's wrapped up. Maybe some Mad Men or Manhattan Projects. Uh, Paper Girls. Oh, that's another BKV one that we could put on the docket, since we haven't covered any of his yet, <laughs> along with Saga. I think we talked about Sex Criminals in there at some point, too. And uh, we did an episode a long time ago on Walking Dead, but it wasn't very good. So, <laughs> who knows? I don't even remember doing it, to be honest. Well, it's out there somewhere. And as you can see here, a big collection of Spawn. Just <laughs> kind of a throwback to my youth. One of the things that probably got me into comics as a kid. I don't know how it holds up today, but it always holds a special place in my heart. So, that went on longer than I thought it would, <laughs> and my kids sound like they're going crazy up there, so we'll cut this one short, and we'll just take a look at the first shelf here of the Ghost Hunter Dave Library, the Indie series. Join us next time for a look at DC and Marvel, which is over here somewhere. <laughs> Brief snippets. Mm. Thumbs up, Dave. Very good. <laughs>